the oh. person in the bottom left corner. <laughs> oh, Simon, Simon. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Dave. Uh, I'm uh, Simon A. I am uh, on social media. I go by Baby Lamb Creations. I'm a YouTuber. I also play Minecraft. I've been playing it for uh, about, I think, almost like nine years or so. And uh, I, hence the piano, I'm also a musician. And uh, Oh, nice. Wow. And he was actually able to find the exact instrument that was used, the exact type of piano that was used in the show, and he's got it. He's been making songs with that. He's been using a bunch of other stuff, too. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, I'm a huge... How many followers have you got? Oh, uh, I have 131,000 subscribers on YouTube. Crikey, that's amazing. 131,000. That's far, far more than I've got. <laughs> I've got on my YouTube channel, I've probably got, I don't know, maybe I've never even looked, probably under 10 subscribers, but then I've probably only ever put about three videos up. Yeah, my my channel is a fraction of the size of Simon's. It's like at one and a half thousand, I think, at this point, um, which is certainly something. But anyway. Yeah, I, I just want to say that it's like a huge honor for me to be well among these people and just talking to you because you know I grew up with Teletubbies, hence the fact that I'm wearing purple right now. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> it, it must be really weird to hear people ask you and tell you like I grew up with you. It must make you feel really, really old to hear that. It, it's very, it's very strange because um, it, it's uh, it's a complete paradox because on the one hand. It happens anywhere, you know, anywhere I go in the world and people is the same, you know, so um, I could go to India and then Indian people go crazy about it. I go to um, uh, the Middle East, you know, in Dubai or, or Abu Dhabi or somewhere and they all go crazy about it. Um, but on the other hand, no one knows who I am and it doesn't actually make me any money at the moment. Um, I suppose we could probably start with Simon because I know he has his questions written down and then we'll work our way around from there. That does, that's not a problem. All right. Sounds good. Okay. I'll just. All right. Simon, you get, you are blessed with the first question. Oh, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, Dave. Again, I guess my oh, question is okay. So I guess my uh, question is uh, now you, uh, now, if memory serves best, you were in the Tinky Winky costume and someone else did the voice of him. Is that correct? Yes, yes. The The story is that um, uh, we we had um, so much ambient noise on the set that we went through the script and we, we recorded real sound when we were making it. And we even had um, rehearsals. People are surprised when I tell them this because they just assume it's people going, uh oh, you know, uh, tubby bye byes um, run away <laughs> and it's all sort of improvised but the, every script was written very meticulously and we had a script read through in the dressing room every morning before going on set and um, uh, in the early days it was like silent movies they had a megaphone and, and so for example you know the, the windmill sequence when yeah it's when you have to go look at the windmill yeah so because we could only see when the mouths were open because our eyes were level with the mouths and if the mouth was closed we were literally blind so um they had to give us cues with the with the megaphone just like in the old silent movie days and someone would go uh um uh windmill two three um uh look two three um something to so i can't quite remember all the things but it was like we actually counted giving the given the direction so we'd all move in the same time and, and and look in the same direction and, and what have you because otherwise we wouldn't know because we were, we were blind if the mouths were closed closed and um uh so obviously all that would be coming out on the soundtrack so they had to overdub um wild track voice voices in post-production and um Anne wood who was the producer uh, and sort of the major owner of of company Ragdoll, who who made the an independent production company who made the show, um, she um, said said to me, um, uh, sorry, I'm not doing this very well. I, I had the third booster um, a couple of days ago. And, That's um, fine. I had just the other day, so it made me more ill than when I actually had COVID. Oh, <laughs> Oof. You're doing all right. <laughs> I'm still going, getting over, it. and also I did I did all this for a magazine a couple of days ago. So I, I'm sort of uh, I'm sort of um, getting a bit fatigued of saying uh, saying it again. But um, 
so you might have to edit some of this. Sorry, it's not very get very coherent. Oh, that's um, fine. That's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> can I can I go back a bit in time? To, because to get to answer that question, I'm also trying to get the camera straight. Um, to answer that question well, I need to sort of go slightly back um, in time, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, I never asked to do that show. They asked me to audition for it. Um, and um, they auditioned apparently over 600 people for, for the role of Tinky Winky. And I, and I got, got the part. Um, and Anne Wood, who was the power, you know, uh, um, be, behind the whole thing, um, she was all extremely friendly. And when we saw each other, it was a hug. And she'd go down to London. I lived in London at the time. And she'd go down to London and stay in a very expensive hotel. And I'd go and have a meal with her in an expensive restaurant. And she asked me to write scripts and submit scripts to see whether any of them could be used. And it was all going really well. And then as we went further into shooting, I noticed that I was getting less eye contact from her and she was becoming a little bit more cold in her manner towards me. And um, before uh, uh, she, she, she was going off to sell the show to the Japanese, uh, flying off to Japan. And before she left, this is quite a few months in, into production, she said that um, the people in the BBC who were head of children's programming and had commissioned the Teletubbies from Ragdoll, the company she owned, um, didn't like my performance. And she said that uh, Anna, Anna Hume, who's the head of children's t t TV at BBC television, doesn't like your performance. And I'm fighting tooth and nail to keep you in the show. And this was a bit shocking because obviously when you're doing filming, if the director tells you you're doing well, then you keep doing what they tell you, you know, you, that you do what they tell you. And, and, and if they say that's great, then you carry on doing, doing what they're saying is great. Uh, so it was a massive shock to be told that the people at the BBC didn't like what I was doing. And then um, she went off to Japan and the second in command of the BBC children's department visited us on the set. And I'd met her a couple of times before. And in the lunch break, I was there in my purple dressing gown because we all had sort of color coded dressing mm. gowns. I had a purple one, Gypsy had a green one. Um, and uh, I went over to this woman and I said, you know, I'm really sorry. Uh, in fact, I think she just came and spoke to me and talked to me. And I said, I'm really sorry that you don't like my performance, but I'm just doing what the director tells me is, is good. And her jaw dropped and she looked at me and she said, I'm really sorry, Dave, but I don't understand what, you, what you're talking about because we haven't seen your performance. Uh, it's standard practice that we don't watch the show we've commissioned until there's an edited episode for us to watch. And as you know, there is no edited episode yet. So oh. I don't understand why you're saying this. And when she said that, I realized that either she or Anne Wood, the big, big power at, the, at Ragdoll and the, the creator of the Teletubbies, was telling me that was something completely untrue. Um, and then when we went to the into the sound studio to do the first post-production overdub uh, of the wild tracks of the voices to um, go uh, no, so they could put it over onto the visual on, on, onto the, um, the visual side of it. Um, I was just virtually inhaling to do the first uh, take of my first lines in the first session. And she said, could you do a different voice? And I thought, well, that's a bit, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a bit weird to just when you're just about to do that. And I've been doing this voice for months and they're all saying it's a great voice. You know, you sound wonderful. And, um, and suddenly just to be told seconds before that I'm supposed to do the first um, wild track to be, do a different voice with no time to prepare whatsoever. Uh, but I did it. I did what I was told and I tried doing a different voice. Uh, we can finish the session. And then a few days later, I bumped into her on the on the set again, and she said, "Oh, by the way, sorry, we can't use your voice." And that was the first that I knew. So that's the story behind why they had an American guy called Tim, somebody, who um, who did the voice of Tinky Winky. And then um, I, it, it was all filmed on location. It was actually filmed in a corner of a field on a farm. Um, I'm getting Facebook messages. Is that disturbing your? Um, well, that's perfectly no, fine. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, no, absolutely. I can turn it off um, if you like, um, but it might take me a few seconds to do it. Um, anyway, so um, where was I? You um, were in the middle. You were in this. Um, the set was built in the field in the middle of Stratford. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, so it was all filmed in a corner of a, 
of a field. They built the location there, and we had sort of porter cabins uh, where we went to use as dressing rooms and as a green room, and, and they had the production offices in other porter cabins and a shower block for getting, you know, washing and things. And um, um, yeah, so, so, so it was all filmed in only in the summer. They didn't film in the winter. And because they went over schedule, because there were so many delays before they could start filming, the last day we did was on the 1st of November, 1996. That was when we wrapped. And there was going to be a big wrap party. And um, that we were all looking forward to this party because we'd been working incredibly hard right the way through the summer um, and well into the autumn to the 1st of November. And um, we, you know, very long hours, starting at six in the morning, sometimes finishing at seven or later in the evening, five days a week. Um, and uh, so we were all very excited to just, you know, be finishing and doing this wrap party. And I came out of costume after we'd wrapped and I got a letter from the accountant of Ragdoll. I still have the letter. And it says, uh, although we know that you've given the role your best shot, your interpretation has not been accepted and basically telling me I was fired. Oh. So I didn't bother going to the rap party. I, I got in the car and I drove back to London. Um, that must have been really hard. I'm yeah. so sorry very, for you. I'm very sorry yeah. about that. I'm going to be honest, uh, Dave. I think personally that you did out of between you and Simon's iteration of the character, I think you were better. Because I think Tinky Winky's character was supposed to be the Simon's hyperactive child. I think you kind of got that a lot better than Simon did. He was more subdued. At least I oh. thought so. He was probably afraid of being fired as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, never know. After yeah. I was fired, a lot of people were afraid of being fired. But yeah. um, uh, it, But uh, the point I'm getting to is that um, uh, they then ha they took on Simon Shelton, who I never met. Uh, I've met his wife. I've worked with his wife. I never met him. Um, his wife was a singer, and I, and I do. I'm a stand-up comedian. You know, before I did the Teletubbies, during the Teletubbies, and ever since, uh, I'm ma mainly a stand-up comedian. But I also yes. do screen acting, and and I've done writing for TV and stuff as well. But uh, Simon Shelton, um, when he took over as Tinky Winky, um, I was still in every episode. So you can notice probably that Simon yeah. Shelton, Tinky Winky. Yeah, you could tell the costumes were different. Um, yeah, you um, uh, definitely uh, won uh, out in the end. Yeah, amazing. I, I was eight foot tall with the area, um, and Simon Shelton is um, is the same height as Dipsy. So you can tell which shots are me. And and this is the point I'm getting to in an extremely long winded waffling way. Um, <laughs> I was in every episode they made, even after I was fired. I was in every episode. And my name is in the credits uh, because there was so much generic footage, mostly the end titles and the front titles. Yeah, the front, also... the end, and the uh, TV tuner events, and the starts yeah, of the, the magical, magical events. events. Yeah, yeah, all that yeah. stuff was done with you. Yeah, yeah the, the windmill. So um, I was in every show, and I I stayed. I I was actually on the payroll, but only because I knew somebody in a very high place who got me on the payroll for the ones that Simon Shelton was the Tinky Winky in. Um, uh, otherwise, I, I wouldn't have been because Ragdoll didn't put my name in the cast list when they submitted them to the finance department. But I did get paid, uh, but only because I fought it and I knew someone who, who was very powerful uh, and had a word with someone at the head of the BBC. Uh, and then suddenly loads of money was pouring into my, my bank account. This happened a few years later. Um, Simon Shelton, he was a professional dancer. So I think he was like more skilled at the choreograph bits. But um, he wasn't sort of a, an actor or a comedian personality, I don't think. Very sadly, you probably heard he was found dead in an yes. alleyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. I it was, remember. It was, yeah, it sort of like shocked me when I found out about it. Yeah, because when it happened, they, they didn't, they weren't clear that it was him. And I spent two days replying to messages. <laughs> for yeah. People. I was dead. <laughs> that, would, that would have been probably really tough. Like, I haven't died yet. Like, I'm still here. Yeah. Like, yeah. that would have been really yeah. bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I know it's like show bizarre, but I think that I think Simon Shelton, uh, may rest in peace, uh, did a great job beating, but you helped him. You bring him, technically, you helped bring him to life with your like performance. Yes. So, I just want to, I think, on behalf of 
all of us here, I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, thank oh, you. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you for noticing. <laughs> oh, trust me. Trust me, Dave. There's a lot of people in this community, which is surprisingly large. I've come to know that over the past couple of years that recognize your work and it's just are so utterly, utterly pleased to have had to work on the show. It's so, and be part of our lives, frankly. Um, a lot of us here are way past the age that we should be enjoying this show, myself yes, included. I mean, I'm 23 years old. So yeah. like literally still attached, still attaching myself to something that I literally watched before I was even a month old. Uh, it's weird, I know, but like, it, it's so it's so humbling to be a part of this and to sort of be, to be able to do something like this and to have you humor us for God knows how long. Like, <laughs> oh, it's, 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 uh, I'd only be doing domestic work, washing up, or making the giving the kids a bath or something if I wasn't talking to you. It's wow. a school day. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're saving you from saving you from your normal life in a way. Yeah, you're saving you're me welcome. from domestic. Abuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually remember seeing like uh, I saw like these two drawings that someone posted online of what it would have looked like um, during that process of when they were like I guess demolishing the the Teletubbies dome you know after mm -hmm. filming ended. You gotta say it was a little bit creepy and depressing like seeing like all that get like taken down and stuff. Yeah, I think they left it up for quite a long time, and then they you know, that's when they, they demolished it in response to the mass pr trespassing that was going on. Well, I guess my second question would be, how do you feel about, like, the massive impact that uh, the show, the, the franchise, the Teletubbies has had on uh, children, not just children now, but children like us who grew up in the late 90s and 2000s, with, who grew up mm. with the original show? Uh, well, I'm very happy to have been involved in something that had such a big positive impact on the world. It's a little bit sad that I didn't get paid uh, uh, as much money as I think I would have been paid if I'd been paid fairly. And I also feel a bit sad that I'm not sort of, you know, I, I'm the outcast, you know, because the Teletubbies went, got flown to New York and got given the keys to New York and they got flown to Australia and treated like royalty in Australia. And obviously I missed out on all that. Um, sometimes I do stand up comedy gigs and um, it's never mentioned and people don't know it's me. And I go on stage and do my acts and come off and no one, no one knew anything other than, you know, I was just a stand up comedian. Sometimes I'm doing it and someone shouts something out from the audience like you know tinky winky or something and other times they do use it as part of the promotion and in that in those cases then i can have like you know a whole queue of people queuing up to get selfies um in, in you know whatever country it is it could be Co you know copenhagen in denmark or croatia or um um anywhere i've performed really you know thailand all sorts of places all over the world um, I would like to monetize it if I could, because, um, you know, we all need money. I'd like to talk about me and Simon's work. Me and Simon, of course, we do Minecraft recreations of Teletubbies episodes. And yeah. um, Simon has also done a bunch of other stuff based off of kids' TV shows, as well as just adult TV shows, because, you know, a variety mm -hmm. channel. He's done a lot of stuff. So you, we've actually been testing this out. So Simon... The musician, go ahead and play us, play us something with your piano, using authentic sound effects, my friend. Okay, well, this one I, I, uh, is usually a little, uh, I guess, jingle that was heard whenever just like a cloud in the sky and Teletubby land, it goes. <laughs> Sorry, I. So, it's so it. perfect. It actually gives me goosebumps. So, like, <laughs> it's it's so hilarious and stuff. But I also wanted to just, um, yeah. Well, Simon plays that. I'm going to show. And you can yeah, obviously make it. If, if it was um, Minecraft, would everything have to be square? Pretty much. Board. That is that yeah. is pretty much what I've done with mine. Um, with you mine do. and Simon's. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to have mods. Um, hold on. Let me just actually change yeah. what I'm sharing here. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Surgeon had a mods. Unfortunately, I see because I use Minecraft on an app, so I wasn't really blessed with the, the mods. But I, you'll be surprised. I was able to like recreate uh, Teletubby Land with 
the limitations that Minecraft had. Really? Gosh. Right oh, yeah. Right. Is this oh, yeah. a Minecraft version? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is <laughs> without any mods. This is just purely in Minecraft. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, could I, uh, um, I wanted to say this. Uh, yeah, see, this is a video I um, took back in September. It was me and a couple of uh, people from a server we're in called Irwin Media. See, yeah. last year, like, my friend nostalgia dude 1998 uh like on every friday he would premiere like every single teletubbies uh, special and we would like we would like have fun to chat and comment on it and we would you know talk about like your work your performance and stuff and it, we just have a fun time just look, going back to all these specials yeah so i could i could shout out nostalgia dude the second here but like this has all been done inside of minecraft which yeah. is pretty pretty incredible. It's mostly based off what's in the reboot, which is why you might not recognize a lot of the stuff inside here, Dave, which is fine. The most recognizable bit is the windmill in the corner. Yeah. Um, yeah. And over watching those videos, which he has been making, I think, Simon, you've been doing it for five, six years now, making videos. Five years. Yeah. Five yeah, years. Last year, yeah, I celebrated my fifth anniversary uh, last year. Yeah. And because of that amount, because of his work, I started my channel and I started doing Minecraft recreations. And this is what I could do with the power of about 60 mods also in Minecraft. Cool. I kind of wanted to ask you this earlier. It's a bit of a weird question, but it's related to Teletubbies. I know it's how like the costumes are like designed was like where their back starts are like, uh, you know, very round. Is it supposed to like be like a cushion or something when you have to like fall down? Or something that we don't get hurt i think so yeah yeah the, i mean the 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 i think a lot of, we, to, in order to sit down on that to tell you table they had to have a hard thing in, uh underneath us you know like a hard thing that would actually sit and support us on the um, on the stools at the telly tubby table um but otherwise that yeah because they were so big and soft they were natural um uh breakers of of uh, impact that, that they, they were they were sort of uh, the, the foam costume bits inside the inside bits were huge and then they put the skin on top you know it would go on as a sort of a as a cover um and they couldn't be washed because they were so thick um it was just like you know all this foam stuff and we, we sweated obviously huge amounts and after a while we smelt like people who hadn't had a bath for several years <laughs> because oh, wow. they, 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 they had a dehu great big huge dehumidifier that's at the size of a porter cabin. So every night they put them, the costumes in the dehu dehumidifier so they'd be dried out overnight, but they couldn't actually dry clean them or wash them. Oh. So we all absolutely stank to high heaven. So we'd wear sort of like underclothes. I used to wear Aikido trousers and, and white cotton tops which I've still got actually long long sleeve tops um and sometimes I think about selling but then like it'd be, I'd have to prove the provenance or well I mean I, I suppose my word is enough but you know for anyone beyond <laughs> that they'd have to like try and prove the provenance that this was worn during the making of Teletubbies but um I, I still wear them I should maybe stop wearing them and keep them keep them from getting any more tatty but uh, the others would wear like more nylon thermal type things I didn't want to wear nylon I'm not a fan of nylon so I wore cotton underneath the costume and I, at lunchtime when we came out of the costume we'd take them off and and have dressing gowns and then put clean ones on for the afternoon because we got so sweaty so so those could be washed the actual clothes we wore before we put the costumes on but the actual costumes stank and so when we'd been in the costume for a while we stank so every day after filming we had to have a shower otherwise we'd be walking around and we'd smell like you know we, we were elizabethans you know people from medieval times or something you never never had a bath yeah i imagine when you guys are filming the segment where you were all jumping around in a puddle that probably wasn't fun either no they had to change that puddle they had to redo it because the puddle they, they were worried about health and safety because the puddle was deeper and then they didn't want it to be teaching children to jump into a, a river or canal so they right. had to make the puddle obviously so shallow that it was you know millimeters deep they had to redo it because they were worried about health and safety concerns. And before I do, I want to thank you again so much, Dave, That's for okay, coming out question. here in the snowstorm. Come and visit us. 
great to talk to you and have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. You too, well, Dave. Dave. Yes, it's a fantastic day. Yeah, wonderful. Yes. Thank you very Hopefully, much. Hopefully, we'll talk to you later. I hope okay. I hope Cheers we haven't completely destroyed relations here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Lay us out, Simon. <laughs> Lay us out, uh, Simon. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you want, I'll, I'll go ahead and just... Great musicianship. Yeah. I, I did not prepare for this at all. I just... Oh man. Or did I? This was this was this was so day. fun. Thank you so much. This was extremely yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, just thank you Thanks, very much. I we've enjoyed talking to you a whole lot. Absolutely. Yeah, well, stay in touch, you know, stay in touch, you know.